Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 release Possessor by Brandon Cronenberg. And when I'm doing this review, it's available on the Hulu streaming service, which it's not behind the paywall. I have kind of the basic Hulu membership where I'm not paying extra or anything. So a lot of people could check this film out. So let's get into it. I'm very excited about this. I will say up front, I really did enjoy this film. It did something to me that films that I really enjoy do a lot of times, which is I couldn't stop thinking about it and analyzing it after I'd finished watching it. And that happened after I watched it, when I was trying to go to sleep, and the next morning, basically as soon as I woke up, hey, hell, even a few times when I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, well, actually one time I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, and I started thinking about it. So that's how you know it's a great affecting film, and this film is. It's really good. There will be no spoilers in this, although there's some like slight thematic spoilers, but nothing that's really going to uh, reveal any sort of twists to the film or anything like that. So uh, basically no spoilers in this review. So let's get into it. Uh, written and directed by Brandon Cronenberg. Now, I knew this film would most likely be good because I saw his first feature-length film, that was in 2012, that was antiviral. And if you have not seen antiviral, uh, you should definitely see it. And if you've seen Possessor and you haven't seen antiviral, oh my gosh, see antiviral. Now, I think I'm undecided. I need to revisit antiviral to see if I like Possessor more or if I like antiviral more. But one of the things I love about antiviral is that Caleb Landry Jones is, plays the main character in it, and his performance is ridiculous. But that's, it's no different in this film because there's a character by the name of, or a, an actor by the name of, I think it's Christopher, oh, I'll find it. It's in my notes somewhere um, who it was. But for the most part, the acting in this film is overall quite good, I will say. Oh, yes, here it is. Um, Christopher Abbott. So he plays one of the characters that's focused on a lot. And he did a, a particularly crazy good job because his role, what he had to do with his role, was very, very tough. Very tough. And if you've seen the film, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen the film, you will know what I'm talking about. But like I said, all the acting was really good. But Christopher Abbott in, in particular, oh my gosh, that performance. So kudos to that guy. Uh, I did see him in the film It Comes at Night, which a lot of people didn't like, but I actually kind of did. I actually have a review for it on my channel, so check that out. So uh, Cronenberg had said apparently that the majority, that most of the special effects in this are actually practical. So there wasn't a lot of CGI used and that was kind of his purpose. He didn't want to use CGI. He knows that CGI doesn't age well. He knows that CGI doesn't actually look that great. Practical is always better. So a lot of the interesting kind of effects in the film, and it does get pretty trippy looking at times, that was all done in camera, which I think is very impressive. And I have a lot of respect for Brandon Cronenberg for doing that. And yes, by the way, if you don't know, Brandon Cronenberg is the son of David Cronenberg. So, and because, well, it, it may be because of that and it may not be because of that. There are elements of body horror that are at play in this film. And it's not like, too much, but it is it is good. It's well done. Uh, Cronenberg said that he was inspired in particular by a book by Jose Delgado from the 1970s, and the book was entitled Physical Control of the Mind Toward a Psycho-Civilized Society. So one of the quotes on what this, this book talks about, this is kind of dense, but hear me out on this, quote, demonstrates how movements can be induced by radio command, Hostility may appear or disappear, social hierarchy can be modified, sexual behavior may be changed, and memory, emotions, and the thinking process may be influenced by remote control. Now this is seen very, very clearly in the film, and people who have just seen the trailer know, based off, off the trailer, that that's seen clearly in the film. Because, well, I'll do the synopsis in a second after I get to this. Now from a visual standpoint, the inspiration for Cronenberg came from Dario Argento. And you can see that if you know it watching the film 
uh, or if you go back to the film and watch it, uh, he said specifically the film Opera by Dario Argento, he took and used a lot of the inspiration from that. You can see it not only in some of the color usage and some of the shot framing, but also in the way that architecture is used in a very interesting and visually pleasing way. That's one of the big things that Argento did a lot is use really cool, interesting looking architecture. And one of the things that becomes clear with the visual aesthetic that's going on here with Brandon Cronenberg is he's using a lot of environments that have shapes featured in them and it creates this really cool visual situation like even though the film moves kind of slowly and it does move kind of slowly you're finding yourself just like really taking everything in taking in the environment it looks very beautiful it looks very clean sleek and it's interesting so that really helps when you have a slower moving film which some people might not like about this film, but I'm good with it, as, as long as it pays off in the end, and I feel like it definitely does. There is a possibility for a second film for this, and I'll tell you why, because apparently Cronenberg said there was a bunch of material that was actually cut out of the original script, so much so that you actually could do another film to go along with this one, and I've heard great things as far as people reviewing this film, so maybe that's a possibility, I don't know. So the quick little synopsis without giving much of anything away, um, this is all based off the trailer type synopsis stuff. It, actually, I'm going to reveal even less than is revealed in the trailer because I feel like they reveal too much in that. It doesn't ruin the film though still. So basically a woman working for a company that is involved in having people possess other people's bodies to use them as assassins to take out certain people the clients for the company are like high paying, very powerful people who want specific people dead. So it's this thing where it's saying, here's a ton of money. Uh, you discreetly take care of this. And obviously they don't want any of their employees to be caught, specifically the main woman it focuses on. And so they found a way to basically get her inside other people's bodies so that they can assassinate. And then she gets out of the bodies. But the whole big thing is, then there's a job that comes along that things don't exactly go to plan. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Does it sound interesting? Yes, because it is interesting. Uh, the film goes from slow and atmospheric to actually kind of crazy and intriguing, kind of at a drop of a hat. Um, you, you kind of see it coming a little bit, but when it strikes, you didn't know it was nece necessarily going to strike right then and to that degree. Uh, the other thing about it is it's very unflinching in a lot of the kills that happen in the film. Uh, it's very brutal. It's very gory. It's very long. Like I said, unflinching. The camera is unflinching. We're like really focusing and really watching what's going on. So it's very, very violent. It's very gory. And some people may have a hard time with that. My wife did because she watched this with me. Uh, she literally like covered her eyes and she's like, tell me when I'm good. Tell me when it's over. Uh, but I appreciate that. You know, good practical effects. Uh, some stuff is really brutal, too. Pretty impressive. Uh, I already talked about the use of shapes and architecture. Wonderful. I did have a little bit of a problem with some of the camera work, especially early on in this film. It does get better as the film goes on, but early on there was a lot of instability with the camera work, like kind of getting that, and this is something I harp on lately a lot, uh, kind of getting that like on a boat motion thing and especially when there are a lot of really tight shots on characters and for that reason like when you're in very tight on someone any like errant kind of motion with the camera is even easier to pick up on and it's more exaggerated so that's one of the things I really didn't enjoy I thought they should have kept it more stable you know maybe use a tripod in those instances because there were a lot of shots where you know, it, it's in tight on a character and they weren't moving with the character or anything. It's just like a stable, should have been a stable shot. So um, some of those choices I wasn't a big fan of, but it's a small thing. And like I said, it got better. There are plenty of portions with no music, which if you have watched enough of my reviews, you know I'm a big fan of not needing to use music. You let the audience kind of just take in the atmosphere of what's act what is actually going on and figure out on their own, how they're supposed to feel about things. Because there is such a thing as filmmakers leading the audience too much. And I feel like music, especially when it's played heavily, does that. Now, with the music in this film, it's got it's got this interesting kind of like um, technological, like cyclical sound to it. 
it, it uh it's it's very mechanical and tech like techno mechanical you know think about the sounds of like a server room or something like that you know those kind of like whirring cyclical sounds so yeah stuff like that uh but the music's good it, it's well done and it's restrained and it's used very very well Pieces of story are actually a little bit hard to catch at times uh, because some of the delivery of lines are kind of soft and also end up becoming a little mumbly. Now, I think it's okay in the sense that it makes it seem more realistic because people are talking in a more realistic manner, how they would with each other, but also it, at, well, at the same time, it adds that issue of you kind of miss some things sometimes. So not only for this reason, but I think this film needs more than one viewing. When I'm doing this review, I've only seen it once. I've done a lot of time like processing in my head what I saw, and I do plan at some point to go back to it so I can catch all the little things that I know are just littered through the film that you know give you more hints for what was coming at the end, uh, and I'm excited to do that, and I'm actually feeling very compelled to do that, and that's great because when I can watch a film and then like the next day feel like I, I kind of want to watch it again, that it's not often that that happens, so... Yeah. The sequence designed for body jumping to show you that it's actually happening with the assassin uh, looks really cool, looks really artistic, and the main reason for that is it's the practical effects. It's really interesting. Um, you could have done it with CGI, but I just don't think it would have been as cool and interesting and trippy as it ends up being. So I love that commitment to the practical effects. There are, oh, the prolonged kills, I already, sorry, I already covered that. But if you're squeamish, there's some tough kind of stuff there. Uh, even though it moves slowly, the film keeps you engaged because you really have no clue where it's going. It is slow, it is atmospheric, and a lot of the times you'll just feel like very relaxed and you're just kind of like, eh, whatever, you might get bored. But with this, you truly never know where it's actually going. It really just keeps this air of mystery until you get to the very end of the film, really. You feel at any time like anything could happen. The story could go in any direction. And that's a great thing. That really keeps the audience involved. And it, for me, it really kept me involved. My wife did fall asleep, but then again, that happens with other movies too. <laughs> the end is kind of crazy. Uh, and it leaves you actually thinking for quite some time after the credits end up rolling. Uh, I was confused as soon as it ended. I needed time to process the film. I literally, as soon as it was done, sat there in silence and just thought. And then went upstairs. I was going to go to bed. And I'm like, well, I'm brushing my teeth. And I'm still thinking about it. I'm getting ready for bed. And I'm still thinking about it. My wife's trying to have a conversation with me. And I'm still thinking about it. And I'm also like verbalizing some of that to her to kind of like process things. I'm like, yeah, but then if... Th because this happened earlier in the film. Then that means that this was how this was in the end. And, you know, those types of things going on. That is a calling card of a very well-crafted story. A very well-written script and a really well-executed film, and I love that. I love that. Uh, the film kind of looks like the film Inception by Christopher Nolan every now and then. I feel like there had to be a little bit of influence from Inception uh, with this film, uh, and there's actually kind of an aspect of the film that gets a little Inception-esque as far as the kind of possession aspect of it, because it is called Possessor. And um, I'm not going to elaborate upon that, but you'll see what I mean when you see the film, or you know, you'll know what I mean if you have seen the film. Uh, in, in particular, it happens kind of with a sequence. One particular sequence is where it really comes up. Um, the title is Dual Meaning, which I love. I love the fact that it is a dual meaning title. And to the title, it made me really think, this is kind of a sci-fi take on a horror possession film. And I love that. Like, I'm not big on the possession subgenre, but this is the type of possession film that I am interested in. And it's new. It's very fresh. It's a unique idea. It's really cool. I'm all in. I love it. And and like I said, you know, Brandon Cronenberg said there's potentially enough to do another film. I would love to see that. I will see that. And like I said, I'm going to watch this again. Maybe more than once. I don't know. It does seem like this is a very small thing, but there's an interesting small parallel in the film between the body possessing job of the main of the female main female character and acting 
like actually doing acting because if you think about it if you're possessing another person's body you have to act like that person so you actually see that kind of stuff going on where they're trying to like get down their lines kind of and their mannerisms and the way they talk and stuff like that so it's a cool kind of underlying small theme where this whole thing is about acting as well so it it was pretty cool the story and cinematic visuals focus so much on the senses uh, that it actually made me start thinking about what it would be like to lose my senses or lose control of my senses. And that would be something that was would be experienced by people being possessed, you know, um, in any possession type film. So it just got me to think about that. And that's another great thing is when a film can get you to think about things like that, especially things like that that are pretty scary to think about, you did a good job. I mean, that's kind of the point of horror stuff. Obviously, this is... This is categorized as horror sci-fi thriller, which makes sense with all of those tags. I agree with it. Ultimately, it's an interesting twist on the possession subgenre, as there's a real division in this between mind and body. And that's another really interesting thing that it brings up, is it made me start thinking about, like, it is nuts that we, with our brain, like, our reality is based in our brain. And there is a, um, I think that all came about with the uh, Rene Descartes, the philosopher Rene Descartes, Basically, the, the separation of your reality is your brain. Basically, your reality is not your body. So it became the separation of brain versus body. And that's very much in display in this film. And it makes you think about it more, about like your reality is your brain and, and everything getting processed through it. So when you think about like your body, it's weird to think that your brain controls your body and how you control your body. And then going further, thinking about the scenario in this film, of if somebody else were to take over your body or if a disease takes over your body and it starts to, you know, deteriorate it and it takes control to some degree. And there is a little bit in the film talked about in respects to that stuff. But once again, it just makes you think about these things. So that's all the big stuff I had to say. But the last like very little thing I wanted to say, and I'm sure people who have just seen the trailer have already seen this, the head apparatus that's used for when the main female character kind of like goes under to then possess bodies um the design of it looks basically like a plague doctor mask that was designed by hr giger now is anyone feeling me on that i really feel like that i feel strongly it looks cool but yeah that that's how it struck me so anyway um obviously i'd love to talk about this in the comments so i'm gonna go ahead and say Spoilers in the comments, go ahead. If you've seen it, let's talk in the comments. We can get very specific. It's all good. Um, would love to hear people's opinions on it too. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever. But out of five stars with half stars in play, I can't go all the way on this, but I'm going to give it four and a half stars, which I do not give that out lightly to anyone. And I'm also going to say, like I was on board after seeing Antiviral, I am still on board for anything Brandon Cronenberg after seeing Possessor. I uh, really enjoy this film. Really good. Great achievement. I look forward to what he has in store for us, Brandon. Um, hopefully he has more in store for us. Hopefully another possessor. But anyway, uh, do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button if you like this video or any video I've ever done. That's your way to repay me because I'm not making money doing this or anything. I'm just throwing the content out there for building a nerdy horror community. So join that community. Hit the subscribe button. It's very painless. Uh, also hit the notification bell and that way you will know when I'm putting up other movie review videos or haul videos or unboxings or any of that stuff. But regardless, I do appreciate you taking your time to check this out, especially if you've made it to the end of this video. And until next time, keep it brutal.